The Switch is my favourite console of the current generation, with it offering some of the best games on any platform. The eShop is also a great addition to the ecosystem, although let's be honest, it's becoming saturated, making it hard to find the gems. Welcome to Get Indie Gaming and to the first of a new series, a series where I'll cut through the wheat from the chaff and show off 10 of the best eShop games of recent weeks I think you should consider playing. Coming in at number 10, AR Memories of Old popped onto the PC, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox back in 2017, with it getting a port onto the Switch during the last week of August. I played this when it first came out and having had the chance to do so again on the Switch, it's lost nothing of the distinct art style with its gorgeous low poly graphics, together with a soundtrack that perfectly encapsulates the main essence and feelings of joy and excitement you get during the flying sequences. These sections are the most satisfying moments of aerial playtime I've experienced for some time, from the whoosh of the initial takeoff to the flapping of the wings to the orchestral highs and lows as the music seems to dance in tune to your movements. While the sections on land and the low-key platforming don't quite match up to the delights of the flight sections, these elements together with simple puzzles are in keeping what's been designed to offer a relaxing and contemplative overall experience. It's short and comes in about the same time as a playthrough of Journey, although taken as a package with the story of our relationship with nature, I'm glad to have spent further time with AER Memories of Old. At number 9 and out on the Switch in late July, Forager as you can probably tell is a 2D open world game that takes inspiration from pretty much all of our favourite base building farming, exploration and crafting games. There are however a few differences compared to many of the other farming type games we see across the eShop. Forager is unashamedly built around the notion of positive grind. Here we see progression on its own as the notion and the sole purpose of the game. You start off all alone on an island with literally nothing and yet soon enough you've gathered enough resources built up a base and you can start to unlock different crafting and building branches. This means it's not too long before you're mining gold, farming animals and plenty of crops with which you're able to harvest. Your character is also very much brought into the whole growth mindset thing with it leveling up and adding new skills and abilities at a steady but progressive tree. I found Forager pretty mesmerizing and at times quite chaotic although the upgrade and development loop feels perfectly implemented that in play, hours pass by in what feels like mere minutes. We Matryoshkins are tough, just let us into your minds, hearts and houses. At number 8, Iron Curtain Matryoshka with Love is the most recent point and click adventure game, I'm happy to recommend for the Switch. Here you play as an American journalist with a fascination of a hypothetic communist state. Having tried to explain all of this to a TV audience, your character is approached by the sultry looking Anna, who happens to be an agent for the communist state. So yes, it's a point and click where there are naturally enough puzzles to solve and clues to find, although the real winner here is the overall script and writing. It's also wonderfully funny and with games looking for laughs so often missing the mark by a country mile, this one does so really well with only the odd fluffed joke here and there. I really did enjoy my playtime with this and while there are occasions where the puzzles do get a little difficult, some of the mini games also have an odd pacing, it is stunning to look at and all put together it's a great point and click adventure. This month's number 7, Legend of the Skyfish, launched on the Switch on August 30th. That said, it's also a port from a 2016 iOS game. Now don't let that put you off. This top-down puzzle adventure game sees you play as Little Red Hook, a girl who's tasked with finding and rescuing her brother, having been kidnapped by the Skyfish. A somewhat grumpy beast from the sea, Hook's people have awoken from the deep having overfished the sea. 
You're aided in the search by a friendly moon whale who takes you from island to island as Hook uses her fishing rod as a weapon to defeat the enemy she finds there. While the combat is fine enough, the game is best thought of as a puzzler with fighty elements that is easygoing and something that can easily be polished off in a few hours. It's perfect for an evening's playtime when there's nothing else to watch on the telly. With 45 levels to play through, it's also super family friendly with me playing this with my two kids, 8 and 5, who loved how it all looked and the overall cute presentation and simple music and sound effects. All in, Legend of the Skyfish is throwaway silly fun, and while the story has its punch, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Coming in at number 6 and originally out in May 2018 on the PC, with it coming onto the Switch this past August, Far Lone Sales offers a superbly immersive and zombie-free post-apocalypse environment. In essence, we have a vehicle-based adventure game with an muted and yet stunning visual landscapes, accompanied by a rich and intricate soundtrack. In truth, I'll point this experience as one that's almost like meditation, I said this back when it first launched and having gone back to it on the Switch, the feeling still holds. The minor puzzles and tasks of keeping your vehicle in the best working order you possibly can is honestly a deeply restful thing to be doing and come the end, which you can reach in a single evening, I felt like I'd taken a nice soothing warm bath. Taking the number 5 slot, Streets of Rogue launched on the Switch in July and is the most brilliant 2D roguelike to come out so far this year. You are able to play as one of 26 different characters and while the procedurally generated levels and overall gameplay in themselves are nothing new, the fun comes from the different play styles and interactions you can make with all the world from the wide range of diverse characters you're able to play with. Each character affords different approaches and how you're best able to tackle the game. These include an assassin, a bartender, a cannibal, doctors, gangsters, guerrillas, thieves and super cops amongst many, many others. You can also change their character traits on the fly whilst you finish off levels, although the inclusion of slave masters and the ability to buy slaves feels somewhat misplaced. I've played Streets of Rogue for 9 and 20 or so hours, and I'm still finding new ways to play and yoke the strengths of the characters. While hardly groundbreaking, it's still a highly compelling option that's well worth getting hold of. It was an ordinary night on a cliched countryside till an evil corporation kidnapped cows. His cows. At this month's number four, we have Space Cows, which launched onto the Switch this September 5th. I first saw this and had hands on time with it back in May at EGX Resd in London, with it being one of the stars of the day. Space Cows is a fun and frantic twin stick shooter. It uses zero gravity physics and features swarm after swarm of killer mutant enemies with you going after them with your weaponized bathroom plunger. You play as, well, you play as a cow farmer who recently had his favorite cow stolen and taken to a mutant infested space station. This is all the right kinds of ridiculous and as a lover of twin stick shooters, this is up there with the best I've played in all of 2019. At number 3, Milk Made of the Milky Way landed in January of last year on the PC, with it coming to the Switch again this past August. Although somewhat different to anything else in this rundown, it came to me as a wonderful surprise. A bite-sized little adventure like others in this video is perfect for filling a lazy couple hours of your time one evening. You play as Ruth, living alone on a farm on a picturesque fjord, you tend to her cows amongst the rivers and valleys she calls home. The fjord is eloquently put together with its bluish mountains and water offset by luscious looking green fields. The characters are also delightful with their rendered blocky bodies, featuring fluid and realistic animations. In a clever little twist, the dialogue is written in rhyme while some passages work better than others, conversations for the most part feel warm, charming and full of life. Of course, it wouldn't be an adventure game without puzzles, 
and this one contains enough of them to provide for a few solid hours of entertainment. They're not terribly difficult and feel paced to aid progression. So, to summarize, Milk Made of the Milky Way is a little charmer that's full of creativity and color. At number two from publishers Devolver Digital, we have Heave Ho, which has overtaken Overcooked 2 as our go-to party game when playing with friends or family. You can play as a single player, although couch co-op really is where the fun is to be had. Up to four players can all get together to try and traverse the levels from point A to point B. Either going solo or what tends to work best is when you all team up, lock hands and arms and let your controlling of the characters and physics do the rest. Like any good couch co-op game, there's joy and anger to be had here in equal measures. It will turn friends, family and lovers against each other with every mistake and error that's made. Okay, so I overgeneralized, but still, having seen a mild-mannered pal of mine descend into the red mist, having failed to grab a ledge for the umpteenth time, well, it's something I wish I had on video. It's all great fun and definitely one for you to consider next time you have friends over to visit. I lived here until I was 10, but my mother didn't allow me inside half the rooms. At number one for the best indie games out on the eShop for this September, What Remains of Edith Finch first came out on other platforms in April of 2017, although it's only been available to play on the Switch since this past July. Edith Finch from the team at Giant Sparrow is a masterpiece of storytelling, and even though the subject matter drifts towards the melancholy, the sum total of this gaming experience is quite majestic. Edith Finch was my game of the year in 2017, and if you have yet to play it and you own a Nintendo Switch and interactive fiction is your kind of bag, it really is a must for you to play. Many thanks for watching and all the support for me and Get Indie Gaming. If you're not, now's an awesome time to subscribe to the channel whilst also clicking the notification bell. There's still plenty to come from me this month and I'll see you all again here soon for more videos.